laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. ending battle of wits between the criminal and the police officer invariably results in victory for law and order. But during the struggle, all too often, innocent people are the pathetic victims. On June 9th, the highway patrol was called upon to halt just such a savage wave of murder and robbery. the Barrington Bank messenger? Sergeant Williams has the reports. He's in your office. Thanks. What goes? Well, it shapes up like a clear case of a man going south with money that belongs up north. They check with his family? Yeah, family, relatives, tradesmen, binding company, everything. Do you have a good record? He did. But in spite of that, there were a couple of people who said they'd suspected him all along. They figured their money was too much of a temptation for him. I guess so. Seems like you never know who your friends really are until you disappear with a satchel full of the company's money. Well, they must have ditched the car, otherwise we'd have picked it up by now. Yeah, people who take off with that kind of money usually have things figured out pretty well in advance. It's one thing he didn't figure. What's that? He's gonna have a tough time finding another job. Baby, look at it. Wonderful green snow. Red, will you stop fooling around and get that stuff put away? Stuff, she says. Baby, this is the stuff dreams are made of. Where's that map? Over there on the desk. Come on, fellas. Guess we'll have to salt you away with the Barrington take. Red, why don't we ditch the motorcycle on the Haskell job? Are you kidding? Why? I've been thinking. Not many people run around in motorcycle and sidecar these days. Too easy to identify. When you're winning a poker, baby, you don't change seats. Nobody's ever hooked that motorcycle up with any of our jobs. I'd feel lost without her. The only time we use her is on a job, and we never leave anybody behind to tell on us. So don't worry. And besides... Besides what? Can you think of a better cover-up? I guess not. Get that stuff put away. Let's get out of here. Let's freshen up on the Haskell job. All right. How much have we got so far? Well, let's see. There was 35,000 in the Barrington job this morning. And just now, about 25 grand in the Townsend take. $60,000. Tax-free. Red, do we really need the Haskell job? You know, this is the first time we've ever tried to pull three in one day. Maybe this time we're going to take that trip to Europe. It takes a lot of dough. But the cops are going to get on the job pretty fast when they find a second bank messenger missing. I doubt if they'll find out about it for an hour or so. By that time, we'll have pulled the Haskell job and be on another vacation. With lots of dough in our pockets and nothing to worry about. Not a thing to worry about. Now, let's talk about Haskell. Another one just came in. The Townsend Fruit Packers report a payroll messenger overdue. Townsend? Yeah, that's the one. The manager thinks the messenger's taken off with 25,000 in cash. Once, maybe, but not twice in the same day. Well, I've got the information on the suspect, the car he was driving. Yeah. All right, alert all units between here and the border to the south and as far north as White River. We've got to get something on those two cars. That's the one used by the Barrington messenger, now this one. Yeah, that's right. Set up roadblocks at all important intersections. I got those in the way. You got a picture of the Townsend messenger? Well, there's a unit working on it. They're going to break the news to the man's wife and get pictures. Well, we've got to get something on the men or the cars, otherwise we're really in the soup. This is the main street out of Haskell. 
soon as I'm in the car with the messenger, I force him to drive through here to the first turn off to the right. If you remember, the main highway is two miles east, but there's no place to ditch the car or the messenger until we drive onto the highway and drive back 10 miles in this direction. We'd better get along. This guy is very prompt. Every payday for the past month, he's hit that bank at exactly 145. It's 1230 now. We can loaf and still make 30 miles in an hour and 15 minutes. Does that do it? I'm all set. Wait a minute. What's the matter with putting the money in the car? I could drive the car. You could drive the motorcycle till we get closer to Haskell. Then we wouldn't have to come back here. We could light out straight from Haskell. It's no good. If for any reason we have to ditch the car, we'll lose all the money with it. You're right. If we have to abandon the motorcycle, we could still make our way back here, pick up the car and the money, and then we could get out. Now you're talking. Let's go. Headquarters to 3110. Headquarters to 3110. 3110, bye. 4312 on investigation. Pick up his patrol. Highway 21, Lane Junction to Marquee Intersection. 10-4. Give me the traffic supervisor at the airport right away. Hello. This is Sergeant Williams, the highway patrol. We'd appreciate a local radio broadcast asking the public to be on the lookout for two missing automobiles. Yes, Matthews. Yeah, we think two cars have been abandoned right in your area. We've got to find them. Would you request all aircraft to report any cars that they see parked in unusual places? Yeah, that's right. Thanks very much. 4312 to headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Telephone tip, negative. Cover stations on Tulare Boulevard between your 1020 and Highway 116 for missing vehicles. Location again, please. Willow Grove, Fremont, four miles south of Townsend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Matthews? Yeah? The traffic supervisor at the airport reports that a helicopter spotted an abandoned car at Willow Grove and Fremont, four miles south of Townsend. Looks like a body lying next to it. I thought I was going to go there right away. Tell him to wait for us. Yes, sir. Come on.
It's Joseph Allen, the messenger from the Townsend Fruit Packers. That's his car. Anything in the car? No, but I didn't touch inside the car or the glove compartment. Better get the lab boys up here. Also a tow truck. Send for the car or two. The trace group of murderers pulled this job. It's been shot in the back. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters, by. Notify units. Car and messenger involved in the Townsend robbery found. Continue search for messenger involved in Barrington case. 10-4. Come on, Ken, let's go. Get out and start looking at the store windows. I'll park the sick one and meet you in a minute. Barrington and Townsend. So close together, we got to figure same gang pulled both jobs. Now, I seem to remember this same M.O. turning up in one of the Midwestern states not long ago. Then yeah, which one? I'm not sure. I know somebody pulled a couple of fast messenger jobs and dropped out of sight even faster. Unless the lab boys come up with something, we haven't got a suspect either. You know, they could have pulled those two jobs and been on our way by now. Yeah, we better check. See if any other big concerns in the area send messengers to the bank for the payroll. selected as victim number three in the violent series of crimes, Ernest Babcock, as was his custom, arrived at the bank for the company payroll. While the highway patrol, without a single valid clue to the identity of the criminals, took the only logical course of action, an attempt to warn similar organizations of possible robbery attempts. Boils down only two possibilities, today at least. The Coral Furniture Company in Lawrence and a Langner plant near Hassel. I'd contact Northern Division headquarters by teletype. I can tell Lawrence. Get me the manager of the Langner plant right away. It's urgent. Sorry, I'm in a hurry. I have a business. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Oh, here, oh. this is my car. Sit down. I'll take you to a doctor. I think there's one on the next block. Just drive where I tell you, Mister. Mr. Lang, this is Matthews. No, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Say, have you got a messenger going to the bank to pick up a payroll today? Oh, all right, look. Tell you what you do. Have him wait until... What? Well, how long has he been gone? What's the name of the bank? City Bank. I'll have him wait there until one of my men pick him up, will you? Yeah, that's right. Have him wait inside. Thanks very much.
Get me the nearest unit to Haskell. Headquarters to 4312. 4312, bye. This is Matthews. Go to the city bank in Haskell. Pick up the payroll messenger for the Langer Company. Get him back to the plant. It's urgent. 10 4? 10 4. <laughs> to headquarters. Headquarters by. Langner Messenger picked up payroll 10 minutes ago and left bank. Should be back at plant by now. Tell him to stand by. Stand by. 10 4. Got it. Matthews. Oh, Mr. Langner, I was just going to call you. Huh? Oh, I see. All right, give the operator a description of the car and the messenger. We'll try and pick him up. Get this information put out in APB. I have a description of the car, Mr. Langner. Attention all units and stations. APB on Ernest Babcock. Address unknown. Height 5'5", gray hair, brown eyes, 150 pounds, wearing a dark gray suit, no hat. Possible victim of a payroll holdup. Could be driving or riding in a black sedan. License 328132. Repeating. <laughs> You get the money. No, it was chained to his wrist, locked. Let's get out of here. Let's go. It was a woman. She held me up at the bank. Where is she? She got out about a mile back. I thought she was going to kill me and take the car. Uh, 3110 headquarters. I got it. Headquarters by. I've established contact with the messenger in the car from Haskell. Car and money intact and messenger. A woman suspect did the holdup. Then she abandoned the car and is on foot about a half mile south of Culbert 1548. We'll send more units to cover the point where the suspect left the car. 10-4? Maybe it was that motorcycle that picked her up. Stand by. You're right. When did you first notice that motorcycle? At the bank. I remember it made a loud roar. All right, come on, come on, come on. What gives? Master reports there was a loud roar during the holdup as a motorcycle raced its engine. Then the motorcycle and sidecar started following the suspect's car. 
I passed a motorcycle and a sidecar in pursuit of the suspect. A motorcycle has not passed me since I stopped the victim's car. Keep rendezvous with the director. We'll take care of the motorcycle. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four? Ten four. You get the wheels rolling. That motorcycle and sidecar should be as easy to spot as sand on the beach. Let's take a look at the map, Ken. Attention all units. Ken, not more than ten minutes ago, they reported right here, just outside of Haskell, on the highway. Now, if they haven't passed Dennis, they must be on their way back in the other direction. Motorcycle and sidecar can get through some pretty small places. They're probably headed for cover. Yeah, no, you better pass this around. I want every man, woman, and child to keep their eyes open for that motorcycle. End of the line, baby. Kiss the old three-wheel chariot goodbye. We'll walk the rest of the way. No report on the motorcycle and sidecar, but we located a Barrington messenger in his car. Same story? Yeah, the same story. And I'll give you odds the ballistics ties them together. Uh, you keep having that motorcycle. Thank you. Mr. Matthews. Yeah, what? Manager of Mayo Motel called in. Male and female tenants have a car parked in their parking well, but she's seen them coming and going in a motorcycle with a sidecar. Okay, that's about a quarter of a mile. Come on, let's go. How did they pick us up so fast? From the messenger's car license, I suppose. We had to drive too far to ditch it. That was a mistake. That was the only direction we could have gone. I know, I know. Don't worry about it now. Don't worry about it. There's plenty to worry about. That guy could identify me easy. Don't forget, they'll be looking for a woman on foot out on the highway. Even if somebody spotted the motorcycle, we're off it now. We have the car in another five minutes. We'll be free as a breeze. Is that everything? Yeah. I'll feel a lot better when we're a long ways from this place. Do you know what it means if they'll pick us up? Don't worry, honey. Any cop tries to pick us up has got to shoot faster and straighter than I do. Take these on out. I'll meet you at the car. Hurry up. Cops. How many? Only two of them. Now. Come on with your hands up. There's no other way out of here. We've got to make a break for it. Wait a minute. They didn't see me. You go out the door and surrender. When they come up to cuff you, I'll start shooting. Take them both off balance. Looks like our only chance. Here I go. Okay, coppers. You win. Throw your gun. I'll weigh out. You better ask the lady to step out, too. What lady? Me he's talking about. Okay, coppers, here's my gun. Come on, get up. It's not that bad. Careful on my shoulder. All right. Take Beauty and the Beast away. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, reckless driving doesn't determine who's right, only who's left. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.